Hi, Anthony. Thanks for calling. How you doing, Matt? Judge. How are you doing, buddy? Good? Okay. Mark, I got a question for you, buddy. Please. I have come across a book at a yard sale that came to me from the Parkers, Julia Parker and Derek Parker. When I found this book at a yard sale, I was a little bit taken back that Aquarius's picture is on the first page of the book, as it is in the middle of the book, as the rest of the astrology signs are. Since I'm an Aquarius, and just to refresh your memory, George, I'm the Aquarius born on January 24th that has two blood cousins and about 15 friends throughout my whole life that are still alive today, that I'm actually, my girlfriend is born on the same day, too. Jeez. Wow. And for I some remember reason, that. this book has been driving me crazy. If it can tell me some things that I don't know why it has Aquarius on the page that it was meant for me to find. Well, okay, first of all, one of the things about Aquarius, okay, let me give you a couple of things. It's an air sign, but it's called the water bearer. So that creates confusion right off the bat because it's part of what we call the air element of Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. But it was given the name water bearer because part of the symbol is kind of an angel or a human being. And this goes back to constellations as well because not to get into a whole bunch of confusion, a couple of thousand years ago, the constellations were what people were using, but in Western astrology, now the constellations are still used in India and certain parts of the world where they use the star groups. We have the same names. And so I know who those people are. And one of the first books I ever got was a kind of compendium of all those sun signs. But the truth is, um, your name is Anthony, we're all more than our sun signs. The sun is very powerful because it's enormous in size, and it represents kind of the higher self and your individuality. And you can you can read more about it in a variety of ways. There are different things on our own website, um, and depending on if you order, we have reports that people can order in our astrology reports here that are not that expensive. Learn more about your sun sign, and the moon is very important for every person, and the rising sign and other planets. So you need to kind of look at the whole thing and not just your sun sign. Are you familiar, Mark, with that author, that Parker person he was yeah. talking about? Yeah, it, it was like one, it was maybe the second book that I ever got, and I remember exactly where I was in in New York City with a friend, and I had already gotten that first book. And we were waiting for a movie to start on the east side of Manhattan, and we had time, and we were looking there, and I found this book, and I actually bought it. It was maybe 20-some-odd dollars. It may not be the same one, but the same authors. And my friend looked at me, and he said, he didn't know the future, he said, you already have one book on astrology. How many books do you need? Well, hundreds of books later, that's my life. I love it. Now, what's going on with the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto? Well, okay. Uranus is in Taurus, and with the inauguration chart, and again, people should tune into an article that will appear in our, we do have an Earth Aquarius News section, that was the name of the old website, now it's the news area, it's going to be called Astroflash, the astrology of the 2020 U.S. elections and the next inauguration, there'll be several podcasts. But people should look for my story in the next 24 hours or so. The thing is that the planet Uranus is with Mars. They're in a conjunction at the time of the inauguration. And not to put too much of a spin on this, I'm going to be comparing, as this sort of series of podcasts happen, other inaugurations, like at the time of John F. Kennedy, at the time of Abraham Lincoln, and some other ones. Uh, Barack Obama uh, and the election between him and John McCain and what happened with his inauguration and the one that happened uh, several years ago with Donald Trump. There's certain things in all of these charts that we need to see. And next year, the planet Neptune goes opposite in the sky. America's Neptune from July 4, 1776. And in 2022, we have the return of Pluto, where it has never happened in the U.S. chart from 1776. It's what's called Pluto returns. And so this is part of the reason we have a kind of plutocracy within the government of a lot of rich people. And when we have a lot of people of a lot of uh, riches and a lot of power, we often get a kind of split between the one percenters or the five percenters and kind of everybody else. Mark, I'm going to go to a caller that uh, I'm going to talk to personally on the air for a little bit. You'll un understand, and then we'll get into his question for you. Okay. Barry in Rock Hill, South Carolina. My God, I hope our prayers were answered. How are you feeling? Boy, oh boy, George, 
I tell you what, buddy, Martha found me Friday, unconscious, got me in the ambulance, got to the hospital. I had a what they call a grand mal seizure, and uh, it's not deadly necessarily. Before I was unconscious Friday, Saturday, and half a day Sunday. Wow! And they let me out yesterday afternoon Monday, and um, I'm still a little weak. I've lost about six pounds in six days. And anyway, I tell you what, honest to gosh, uh, my wife saved my life. If Absolutely. Her, I'd be dead. Do you remember passing out from the stroke? No, no. Although it was it was early in the morning, three or four, right after coast to coast, and uh, I had this strange feeling in my brain as I was falling asleep, and I. I guess I went into a seizure then and unconscious, and Martha found me, thank God, and uh, got me to the hospital. And I, I, I thank goodness I knew a neurologist here in Rockville. Jeez. Now, do you know if this was in your temporal lobe? Uh, no, I don't. I think it might have been, because that's where those kinds of grand mal seizures occur. And, well, uh, I, di I didn't notice any kind of a headache just before I passed out or whatever. Did you feel kind of deja vu-ish? You know what deja vu is, right? Oh, sure. Did you sure. get that kind of feeling first? Uh, not really, no. It, it was like a, all of a sudden, I was falling asleep after coast to coast, and sure enough, my brain went into, uh, it called an infarction. And uh, it, sure enough, I went unconscious, Martha found me about nine o'clock, got me to the hospital, and sure enough, I told if they didn't save my life, that that uh, neurologist. That's um, fantastic. What kind of medication are you on? Well, believe it or not, before the, the seizure, I was on only one uh, drug, whatever. I can't remember the name of it right the second, but um, now I'm on six different prescriptions. <laughs> My gosh. Well, I'm glad I'm glad our prayers were answered. I was on my way to the trademark office to get old buddy, old pal, or friend of mine on my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, George. Listen, I, I, uh, Mike in Colorado, uh, uh, what's his name up in Tacoma, Washington, Wayne. Wayne, and then you had Corny all concerned, man. Yeah. I, well, I was also getting emails from people saying, please give us an update on Barry. And I kept telling Tom, and Tom said, I don't have anything right now. <laughs> well, we're glad you're okay. Did you have a question for Mark, or were you just checking in? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, it's a good question, too, Tommy said. George, why does the planet Earth rotate on its axis? Well, that's a good question, Mark. We got a minute. Give us an answer to that. Well, that has to do with the perturbations, a uh, weird word having to do with the moon and the earth and the sun, how the earth is tilted. The tilt of the earth, which gives us seasons and all the day night kind of thing, um, that, ha that can change slowly over periods of time. Um, so it's not as if it's absolutely fixed, but it's, it's the way it's. It, this has to do with the question about divinity, really, you know, the spiritual forces of, of how everything's going. I think what people don't realize is, because I study astronomy for ages here before even astrology, is we're all part of the solar system. The solar system is hurtling around the Milky Way. It is like a 220 million year cycle of how our solar system is traveling. There are these dimensions and energies and spiritual forces that are way beyond anybody to, to understand, but that's part of the answer. All right, and Barry, you take care of yourself, and our prayers were answered, my friend. Be well. Buddy. Good old Barry in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I thought we were going to lose him. My gosh. That's fantastic news. We're going to come back and take final calls with Mark Lerner in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Don't forget to watch our TV show, Beyond Belief, with George Norrie. Just log on to beyondbelief.com.